This lesson is an introduction to polyprotic acids and bases. Polyprotic acids are those that can donate more than one proton, and polyprotic bases are those that can accept more than one proton. A common example of this is carbonic acid, H2CO3, which can dissociate into a single proton, and HCO3-, which is also called bicarbonate. The equilibrium constant for this first acidic reaction is termed Ka1, or sometimes just K1. And with all equilibrium constants, it's equal to the concentration of the products, so H plus and HCO3 minus, divided by the concentration of non-pure reactants, in this case, H2CO3, which is likely dissolved in water. The second acidic reaction here is if the product of the first one, so it's HCO3 minus, comes down and loses its proton to create a carbonate, or CO3 2 minus ion. Again, the equilibrium constant for this second acidic reaction is equal to the products over the reactants. You can also examine this in reverse. And so while carbonic acid H2CO3 is a diprotic acid because it can lose two protons, carbonate CO3 2 minus is also a polyprotic weak base because it can accept two protons. The first reaction for the CO3 2 minus as a base would be for it to take that proton from water to create HCO3 minus and OH minus, our basic hydroxide ion. What you'll notice here is that because we have water, H plus, and OH minus involved, that really these two reactions are the opposites of each other. And it turns out that the equilibrium constant number for KV1, this first basic reaction, is equal to the equilibrium constant for water, KW, or one times 10 to the minus 14, divided by this second or corresponding equilibrium constant for the acid. Likewise, this HCO3 HCO3 minus can continue to grab a proton off of water and regenerate H2CO3. KB2 for this reaction is going to be equal to KW divided by Ka1. So you see this crisscross correlation between the equilibrium constants when you have a series of polyprotic acid and its conjugate polyprotic weak base. In the particular textbook that we use, which is Harvey's Analytical Chemistry 2.0, Appendix 11 includes the Ka values. There are a ton of different tables out there from whatever textbook you might be referring to, but often the name that is shown is the name of the neutral compound, which means that there's no charge, positive or minus, but the drawing is that of the fully acidic form, meaning that all protons are present. In some compounds, those names and the drawings match. So acetic acid, when it's fully protonated or fully acidic, is a neutral molecule, and so too is adipic acid, which you notice is a polyprotic um, acid with two pKa's because it can lose the hydroxyl, the carboxylic proton on either end of the molecule. However, there are other examples where the names and drawings do not match. So alanine is the name of the neutral compound, but what you notice here is that we have an extra positive charge um, on the amine group here. And there are multiple pKa's, multiple Ka's. The acidic one is for the carboxylic acid, the COOH proton. And the more basic pKa is for that loss of the third proton from the amine. Ultimately, what you need to remember is that the name is for the neutral molecule. And if this drawing here does not have a zero charge, then this is not the structure that belongs to the name. Alanine, for example, would be NH2, neutral, no positive charge. So to emphasize one more time, be aware that the drawn structures are not always the neutral name. They are the fully protonated structure, which might be a different form than the name listed next to it. Okay. One of the important things in this topic is to be able to visualize and identify what the dominant species is in your reaction. I'm gonna start with the ladder diagram here for a monoprotic solution. So going back to a simpler acid-base problem here, where we just have a weak acid, HA, that can lose one proton to find, to create A minus. This kind of a box here, you might see these vertical as well, is called a ladder diagram because the line in between different types of species is considered to be a rung on that ladder. The predominant form is written in the box here. And what you'll notice is that when pKa equals pH, we have a line here which indicates that these two species
species are present in equal concentration. That can be figured out from the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. pH is equal to pKa if this log term goes away. If we have log of A minus over HA and that ratio is the same, then you have a log of one, which is zero, and that disappears. So when you have equal concentrations of the conjugate weak base and conjugate weak acid, then we have pH equal to pKa, and that is represented by this rung. However, if you're at a more acidic pH, then you have more HA than you have A minus. And so at a more acidic pH, your predominant form of this poly of this monoprotic acid is HA, and if you're at a more basic pH than the pKa, your dominant form is A minus. That does not mean it's pure. There's still going to be some balance between these two species, but this does help you identify which one is more concentrated. To summarize, when pH equals pKa, HA equals A minus. When pH is less, then the acidic form is the major species. When the pH is more or more basic, A minus is the major species. So we can use an example here of phenyl acetic acid, which is monoprotic, has one pKa value of 4.3. If we ask ourselves what the major species is at pH 5, then we should be able to say something along the lines of, well, is this pH greater than or less than the pKa? Oftentimes, I like to visualize the pKa by actually writing out a ladder diagram. So if I put the 4.31 right there on the pKa, then I can point an arrow to where the desired pH for this question is. So 5.3, is it a more basic pH? So going from zero on the left up to some imaginary 14 on the right, we see that we're pointing at the A minus. And so the major species is phenyl acetate, the anion. We can estimate the percent composition for monoprotic acids and bases by the factor of change from the pKa. We know that when pKa is equal to pH, we have a one-to-one -one ratio, and that the basic form is going to be more present when we have a higher pH. In reality, what happens is that because it's a log scale, pKa is a log scale, if we have a pH equal to pKa plus one, we have a 10-to-one ratio with an excess of the base. If we're two pH units higher than pKa, then we have an excess ratio of 100 A minuses or base ions to the neutral HA molecule. This is summarized down here. And what I want you to think about is the 10 to 1 ratio means that we have about 90% of the A minus and 10% of HA. 1 to 100 means we have about 1% A minus and we have 99% HA. And that's just referring to two pH units below. So let's test this out. What would be the percent of phenyl acetic acid in the form of HA, our neutral form, in a pH 5.3 solution of phenyl acetic acid? On the last slide, we determined that at pH 5.3, we are at the more basic end of things. This pH is essentially one pH unit higher. And so we have an approximate 10 to one. And therefore, if we're concerning ourselves with HA, HA is going to be the part of one part out of 10, and therefore we have about 10% HA. Okay, continuing with monoprotic acids and bases, there are more detailed formulas about what percentage of the species is in each form. When you look at the pH on the x-axis versus alpha, which is the fraction in each form, we see that at lower pHs, we have essentially 100% of HA minus sorry, of HA in this case, which is neutral. That percentage decreases until you have a 50-50 split right at the pKa, which is five for this example. And meanwhile, you have a rising fraction of A minus, which after you've gone sufficiently basic, you have 100% of A minus. The fraction of HA is equal to the concentration of HA divided by the formal concentration. Remember that the formal concentration is going to be the concentration before everything dissociates. And so that is equal to the concentration of HA plus the concentration of A minus, because those are the two species that have been formed in equilibrium when you've made a solution of concentration F. So F is gonna be something like, I don't know, 0.1 molar or whatever other concentration you might have in your question at hand. 
You can make some substitutions and you can also find that the HA over F is also equal to H plus over H plus plus KA. The fraction in A minus is the A minus concentration over the formal concentration, and that's going to be KA over H plus plus KA. All right, well, that's cute, that's interesting. That is our examples in monoprotic acid base, but this lesson is about polyprotic acid base. With that review under our belts, I want you to look at these ladder diagrams for diprotic and triprotic systems. One of the things that we want to again remember is that the rung on the ladder is equivalent to a pKa point. So this is pK1, the first acidic pKa between H2A and HA minus. pK2 is where HA minus and A2 minus are equal. So this is a diprotic losing those two protons. In the example of a triprotic ladder diagram over here, you can go from H3A to H2A minus to HA2 minus to A3 minus. And there are again three different pKa values at the rungs. We identify the most dominant species using these ladder diagrams at certain pHs compared to certain pKa's. We also then can figure out the second most dominant species by where the pH falls within the range. So if the pH is going to be closer to this pKa than this one, you would be able to say, okay, like H2A, if this is the pH we're interested in, right there, H2A is the most dominant, and then because we're closer to H3A on the left, that's the second most dominant. When the pH is exactly halfway in between two pKa values, then the pH is equal to one half of the sum of those two pKa values. So right here, halfway between pK1 and pK2, the pH is one half of pK1 plus pK2. Also, the two neighboring species, H3A and HA2 minus, have equal concentrations there. So you can think of this as being right in the middle of the tug of war. All right, dominant species in diprotic solutions. So this is a summary of what we just discussed with the diprotic. When pH is less than the first pKa, we have the fully acidic species. When pH is in between the two pKa values in here, you have the intermediate form of the acid. And when the pH is higher than the last pKa value, you have the fully basic form. Now, let's test ourselves. What is the most dominant species in a solution of carbonic acid if we're at pH seven and the two pKa values are 6.35 and 10.33? Well, I would do uh, two ladders, right? So I've got two rungs in my ladder. I have 6.35 and I have 10.33 and you have to forgive my mouse drawing skills here. Carbonic acid, H2CO3, we've seen earlier as our example of a nice polyprotic acid. We're gonna have the HCO3 minus, and hopefully by the time I'm done drawing these molecules in, you'll have already answered the question. And finally, we have CO3 two minus. So to answer it, what I would do is to then point to where pH 7 is approximately, which is right there, and find that the most dominant species in that case is going to be our HCO3 minus. If we wanna know what the second most dominant species is in that solution at a pH of seven, then we come back to the fact that our particular pH here, 7.0, is much closer, it's about 0.7 pH units away, from the first pKa than it is from 10.3, which is three entire pH units away. Therefore, our second most dominant species in the solution is going to be the H2CO3, which is our fully acidic form, because we are closer to that. Mathematically speaking, the fraction of each species in each form can also be calculated. But before I give you those formulas, I want you to look at this graph we again have the pH on the x-axis, and we have the fractional composition on the y-axis, so pH and alpha. In this case, we're looking at fumaric acid, which has two pKa values that are pretty close to each other. And because they're pretty close to each other, you're losing H2A as you're gaining HA minus, but you're also, that HA minus that you're generating is starting to produce some A2 minus. And so there's never a full 100% concentration of the intermediate HA minus. It has a maximum, 
and that maximum is halfway between these two pKa values. But it does not reach 100% up here like the fully acidic and fully basic forms do at more extreme pHs. Mathematically, I would not expect you to memorize this formula in terms of all of the denominators here being the same. But I do want you to realize that our fractional composition is going to be the composition, um, the concentration of what we're talking about, so H2A, HA minus, and A2 minus, divided by the formal concentration. The denominator on this is going to be H plus squared plus H plus times K1 plus K1 times K2. Well, yeah. Okay. And on top, we have some changes in what the equilibrium constants and H plus concentrations end up being. You can refer back to a slide like this if you ever come into a question where you have to calculate the actual percentage. All right, dominant species identification in tripodic solutions. Here the example is arginine. Arginine is one of our lovely molecules. The neutral molecule is actually ambiphilic, so it has a negative charge and a positive charge right here, but the overall molecule is neutral. And it's one of the intermediate forms in this polyprotic acid base series. The fully protonated version is H3 arg for arginine 2 plus. So I want you to recognize that sometimes your fully protonated form is not neutral. This fully protonated form as a pKa of 1.82, it will lose this chiroxylic acid proton right there to create our H2 arg plus. Then the next proton that is lost at pK2 of 8.99 is going to be this amine right here, going from NH3 plus to NH2. Voila, this is H arg, the neutral molecule. And then finally, our second amine here can be um, deprotonated with a pK of 12.1 to create arg minus, where we just have the negative charge on the carboxylic acid right here. So what is our most dominant species of arginine at pH 12.5? Well, we're going to compare that pH to our pKa values, and it is greater than pH of 12.1. So I would point my arrow right at arg2 minus and answer that we have the arginate ion. Now, changing the question a little bit, what is the most dominant species of arginine at pH of 3.09? We're going to come over and we're going to be like, well, the pKa here is 1.82, so it's right in between pKa of 1.82 and 8.99. If you are not familiar enough with the type of drawing, excuse me, here I'm getting my stylus, then you can also make a full out ladder diagram. In the case of the ladder diagram, we have our H3 arg plus, we have the 1.82 we have our H2 arg plus. We have the next pK of 8.99. H arg, our neutral intermediate. So we have two intermediates here. And then finally at pK of 12.1, we get ourselves to arg minus. This is a more compact way of examining the pKa versus pH. And since our question is about 3.09, we're going to point in here again at H2 arg. So it is the first intermediate. We would also like to know what the second most dominant species is at pH of 3.09. And in that case, we're again looking at that region where we have our H2 arg. Plus, we have that interested pH of 3.09 that we are curious about. And we're really asking is 3.09 closer to 1.82, which is our first pKa, or to 8.99, which is the second pKa. And it's clearly closer to the first pKa. Therefore, our second most dominant species is going to be the H3 orange 2 plus. So ultimately, first most dominant is H2 orange, and second most dominant is H3 orange. You could then ask what's the third most dominant, and in that case, it would be H arg. So first, second, and third, the answer to this question. All right, calculating the fraction of the species in each form for triprotic acids and more fully protonated acids can be pretty gnarly in terms of the math. What I want you to realize is that it follows the formula where the numerator 
is going to be H plus to the N for the acid. You're going to have K1 times H plus to the N minus 1 for the first of our deprotonated intermediates. For the next deprotonated intermediate, um, <clears throat> you're going to go through and you're going to end up subtracting the coefficient up here for the H plus, and we're working by multiplying forward all of these equilibrium constants. D, standing for denominator, is equal to this formula down here. Again, no need to memorize this for my course, but it is something that you should recognize exists that you could work with. 